So I'm excited to announce the first of a new line of products. This is called the Clean Comp, uh, which is effectively Clean Composite Video. So I've started with the Atari 2600 and I've taken the TIA chip, so the chip that generates all the video signals, and directly going off the digital signals here, reconstructed and generated a composite signal and S video from scratch. So the entire circuit here is all designed obviously by me and tested and the point is to generate the cleanest possible composite signal you can get. I've got it to the point where our composite signal now is cleaner than most S video and RGB mods. But you guys have been after this for a while now. I kept revising and revising and improving and improving, but you guys want to buy this and use it. And this is only going to grow better with your guys' feedback. So I'm just going to show you now how to install this. You'll notice there's a small bodge wire here. That's the first batch is missing a, a trace from here to here. So leave that on when you get the board and that'll go in the next version. And let's just see how easy this is to install. You've got an Atari 2600 Junior probably here by the looks of it. Uh, this works on obviously all the models. So it works on the 6 switcher, the 4 switcher, the Junior, all versions around the world. I've tested it on every single model. This works for everyone. The only thing you have to look for is the TIA chip. So you have the cartridge connector. This works the same for all of them. Cartridge connector, then riot chip, then MPU, then TIA. It's always the chip furthest away from the cartridge connector. Look for the notch because different versions do have this different ways. For example, a six switcher, you can see the notch is the opposite side. And on this model, the notch is here. So all you want to do is face the TIA chip where the writing is in order to be able to read it. So effectively upright. Take the clean comp and do the same thing. So it's in the orientation ready to, you know, install. And then flip the board over horizontally like this. And then the clean comp will simply sit over the bottom row of pins and it'll fit over all of them. So it goes over all the pins. And there we go, that sits over nicely. So it just sits on all the pins and there is a version of this, I believe it's the four switcher, where it looks similar to this board, but the TIA chip is the other way, so the notch is over here. And on that board specifically, it would then be installed, obviously, upside down like this. And the shield does actually go over and miss this. So just make sure when you're installing it, you basically just get the TIA chip facing the orientation that this is facing, flip the board over horizontally, and then place it on. That's how you install it on any version. You don't need any more info than that. Now the install doesn't get much simpler than this. Where there's the black boxes we need solder, where there isn't, you're free to either solder them or leave them. So just blob some solder over the hole. Wait a second for it to flow through. I tend to then go the opposite side. And then just go over. In this case, I'm just going to go over specifically the pins that do actually need the solder and leave the others. Just watch this bodge wire. You can always just gently nudge it out of the way if it's in your way. And I can even drag solder down these pins for quickness. Just make sure you spend enough time over each hole to allow the solder to flow. And then considering I've got some holes covered just for visual, I'm going to cover all the other holes as well. But as I say, the only ones that are actually connected to anything are the ones with the black box around. The other step now is you can't see the silk screen. I'll improve that on the next versions. You've got three pads here. This is for PAL. So you just bridge these three. And if you've got an NTSC console, you can bridge these three. This is a PAL. So I'm just going to bridge these. And it's as simple as that. And if you have, oh, missed one pin. If you have a NTSC, then obviously bridge those pins instead. And then one note on the NTSC versions, we have support for stereo audio. So you'll notice on the NTSC models, I don't have one in front of me, but the pin 12 and 13 of the audio are joined here with this little trace. So that's pin 12 and 13 here. So you'll see pin 12 here, 13 here. So if you were to flip the board over, pin one starts here. So if we flip the board over, that means pin one starts here. 12 and 13 here. So these are a stereo audio channel on the NTSC versions. And if you look at these two traces on your specific board, if it's NTSC, you'll see they join together. I think it's near the start. If you want to sever those two connections, you'll get true stereo. 
If you want to leave them intact, then you'll obviously get mono audio. So it's up to you. It's a, a new feature that I'll need some feedback on, what you guys think of it. Uh, I've got one NTSC console, so I'll do some further testing myself as well. But effectively, if you just join the three pins and leave it as is, you have mono audio, just like the PAL. You can optionally then cut the trace for pins 12 and 13 and get stereo audio. And that's literally the install done. So all you've got to do now is solder our wires for the AV out. So you've got a ground, ground, and ground pad here. So just three grounds to attach whatever you like. You've got composite out. You've got S-Video Luma and S-Video Chroma. Then you've got audio left and right. Now, we sell um, both composite video bear, S-Video bear, and also a combined composite and S-Video bear cable. By bear, it means the ends are already stripped. And then the ends of the cable are all here. So I'm just going to go ahead and pre-tin the pads. So they're all ready. And now we want to solder these wires on. So we'll start with the composite, I guess, the yellow. And they're all a little bit long, so I don't need them that long. I'm just going to trim them down. We've got four grounds, so I can just join them all together if I like and attach them to one pad. So I'll just twist them all into a little knot. Make them a little bit shorter. And I might just come in from this side on the ground just so I can still see the connection. And depending on your cable, they'll all be different colors. I'm going to say white and red on this cable are audio. You can obviously bail them out to uh, the ends with a multimeter, but fairly obviously white and red, I reckon, are audio. Usually red is right and white is left. Do the white left. And then for the composites, uh, in this case, the blue and green, there's so many different colors. So I'm just going to go ahead and literally tack on a blue to the chroma and a green to the luma. And then if we don't get S video, we can flip them around. That's always the simplest way of testing your composite cable. And that's the install completely done. So all that's left now is to plug in the cable. We'll start with composite. And I'll run through a capture card first. And the capture card pretty much shows more noise than any monitor I've seen. So in one way it's good, another way it's bad. It's obviously going to show you the worst possible case. So let's just start with Pitfall. And importantly, I'm going to use an original transformer-based power supply. And you'll see why this matters a lot in a minute. And we can see on the capture card here, this is the um, Pitfall. I'll just plug a controller in. And you can see there we have the guy running. You can see there is the composite video working nice and easily. So that was no mither whatsoever to install. So if we just flip this board over while it's running, we'll just be careful. And there's a few things to do if this signal isn't right for you. So the first is you have adjustable potentiometers here. So you've got a composite signal here and an S video here. So for the composite, this tunes the chroma. So if we turn this dial here, it should already be tuned correctly. It will change the chroma. So if I just zoom in on that for you, and I'll turn the dial clockwise to increase. And if you notice, you'll notice slightly the little dimples here, like little dimples of noise, and little dimples here. If I turn it counterclockwise, which reduces the amount of chroma, effectively the, the saturation of the color, it doesn't make a huge difference but it'll slightly soften the image. So it's just fine tuning the chroma if you find you have issues. In this example, it's already pretty much clean, so you can barely tell the difference. Like you, you really can't tell much difference at all on this specific version. On some versions, it makes a good bit of difference and you really see the fade. So this is on a real monitor and you can see the image is much clearer. Well, it depends on preference, but I find this is much clearer than the capture card. And the same goes for CRTs. It's even clearer on CRTs because they don't see as much info. But you can see here, it's a nice clean composite signal. So now let's check out S video. Let's see if I got this the right way around. And yes, I did. So this is through the capture card. I've only currently got um, a capture card S video. I don't really have a monitor that has S video at the moment. So I definitely want some feedback from you guys on this one. And if we take a look at that full screen, you can see that's the S video. Now, if we go to uh, the dial 
on the S video, which is this one here, and we tune that, you'll see on the S video, as we turn the dial, that's softened, where you can see the noise has gone. And then if we turn it up, you'll see that's fully sharpened. And effectively, that's changing the chroma levels. And again, you see these horizontal, depends how well the capture and the compression works, but there's like horizontal noise a little bit. It's too sharpened, like especially here. See this kind of ladder here going up? That's a little bit of noise on the S video. And turning this S video dial counterclockwise to, I find, pretty much the lowest um, position gives you, I think, the nicest S video signal, at least on this capture card. Again, this will vary on monitor to monitor. That's why I've allowed these adjustable potentiometers. But you have both options of S video or composite. Now, one other thing to note if you don't see an image straight away as well is all of the 2600s come with this dial. This is the replacement dial because the original is broken that changed the color of the console, so the timing of color. If we turn this, for example, you'll see the pitfall guy completely changes color. And if you go far enough, you'll lose signal altogether. So you need to make sure that this wheel is tuned. So if you don't see an image, just gently turn it until you potentially see uh, an image. That could be the only problem you have. And on the six switcher, the color dial is here. So you can't really miss it. I mentioned at the start of this video as well, the power supply makes a big difference. So if we look at the signal, there's not that much noise there. Now watch what happens when I simply replace this power supply for a generic switch mode power supply. So this isn't as clean as a transformer based power supply. And take a look at that for an image. So the only difference there is using a different power supply. This is just a third party power supply from eBay. And look how bad that image is. I mean, you can see the underlying image, but you have all this, what I presume is probably common mode noise or switching mode noise from the power supply. So that's a really poor output due to the power supply. If I just unplug that now and replug in the official power supply, or in essence, any transformer based power supply, you can see the image is perfectly stable. So this is definitely something I still plan to support. We want to be able to support every power supply we can. But I've got to work on a design that will handle cheaper power supplies. I'll do that in the next version, but just remember to use original or decent quality transformer based power supplies. And you should get a lovely output like this. I've had a lot of nice feedback from the community on this so far, and we've had improvements already. This is already the fourth version, but the first one to officially release. And I'm always excited to hear what you guys think and definitely give me feedback. If you want to talk technical, jump on our Discord, discord.gg forward slash retro6, or contact me any way you like. I'm on the Atari Age forums as well. There's a thread on there about this mod, and I'm always looking forward to improving things. So that's it for this one, guys. I hope it was useful, and I'll catch you in the next.